What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. You know where we are. We're back at the 1928 historical house here. And anytime we're here, you know what that means. We've got some awesome carpentry details to share with you. And today is no different. So I've got a challenge in here. It's been intimidating me for a little bit, but I think we got it. I think we got a solution. So let's go inside, check it out, and we'll take you guys along for the ride. But this is a cool one. So here is the task at hand today. We've got this curved skirt board here. Not something you see every day. As a matter of fact, the only place I've ever seen one of these is here at this house. And that's how we got to this point. We copied what we've seen in this house. So up the rest of the stairway here, other parts of the home, they have this nice curved swoop right here. So real quick backstory on how we got to this point. We basically made a plywood template. None of these finished treads and risers were here. It was just all rough framing. We put this in place, right? We kind of got this outside miter dialed in where this takes a left-hand turn up the ascending staircase there. And we got a piece of plywood in place right here. So this curved part, which was very intimidating to me, actually was the easier part of this whole thing. What we did to accomplish this swoop right here is we took a level here and we brought it all the way across to this point, this outside corner right here. And this jam and pencil molding wasn't here, it was just drywall. And we took a chalk line. So I got uh, a piece of the chalk line in my left hand, pinched it against this drywall and the other loose end of the chalk line where you actually hook it onto things to snap lines. I put a pencil in that little hole and then I just, you know, started doing this and moving this hand around until I found the proper swoop that I wanted. So really organic way of doing this. I, I mean, what I just said is exactly what we did. So there wasn't really anything hard about it. It was just kind of finding that, um, perfect point right there where it would meet up with this and then it would meet down here back out to straight. So we got that dialed in. We put our plywood template on there, found our point, traced it on our template, cut it out, and then we laid that template on a piece of 1x12 Windsor 1 and that's what we have right here. So I traced that, cut it out with a jigsaw and a track saw. So that's how we got to this point. Now this isn't done yet. We have a cap that has to go on top of this. You can kind of see it in the background there. It's this cap right here. This is 9 16 thick by an inch and 3 16 tall. Now this is a small piece of trim, but it's not small enough to the point where you could get this thing to bend in that motion right there. That's not gonna happen. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something that's called bent lamination. We're basically gonna take this piece of molding, cut it into little 16 to 8 inch strips so we can then individually bend those to go up this curve right here. Now like most things, there's other ways you could accomplish this task. You could do a steam box. So basically you buy a steamer, build a box to put these pieces of molding in and then the steam saturates the wood fibers with water. All that moisture is gonna penetrate the wood and then it softens them up so you can then bend them in any shape you want. They use this on curved millwork a lot in boat building and it's, it's a method that's pretty common. However, there's several ways to do things. So we're going with this method, bent lamination, and uh, I'm looking forward to giving this a shot. It's gonna be my first time doing this actually. So let's start ripping this thing down into little individual strips. So having this piece right here dialed in is really the first step in this whole process. So I know this is a 45 degree miter right there. It's not closing up well because the curve's not letting it close, but I've got this marked off with a pencil and that's gonna show me exactly where this miter needs to stop. So I'm gonna do my bent lamination from this point down to where this straightens out, which we can take this piece right here and kind of see where that happens. And it's gonna be about right there. So as long as I'm past this point here, I'll go ahead and mark that as well, mark the top. As long as I'm past this point with my bent lamination, this side over here doesn't really matter because I'm gonna leave these pieces long 
and then I'll come back with a square and a multi-tool and just zip that straight and we'll have a seam right there and we'll dial that in, we'll sand it in. That thing will look good to go, but as far as this, I'm gonna 45 degree cut my long pieces and then start ripping them into those strips and we're gonna get this thing dialed in. And those need to be, we'll say about 33 inches. That'll give us plenty of room down here on the leftover to cut off. So I'll go ahead and put that 45 degree miter on there so that's already taken care of when I start ripping this on the table saw. And that's really the whole process here is ripping these things into little individual strips, like I mentioned, 16 to an eighth of an inch and just repeating that process until you have that full profile cut out. Now it kind of goes without saying that you're gonna lose that thickness of the table saw kerf there from the blade because it's gonna get turned into sawdust. So you're gonna need more than enough material to do this. And here I am labeling. And I realized I was gonna have a lot of these thin little strips, so that's where I came up with, I better label these or they're gonna get mixed up. And what I did was I ripped one complete profile down and I labeled them one through five. And then on this next one here, I did it alphabetically. So A through E, I think I got on this one. So I wasn't able to get the whole thing out of two pieces of molding. I actually took four full pieces of molding to get this. So it took four times as much as just a single board. Pretty crazy how much you lose with the saw blade there. And also the fact that I didn't want to get my fingers too close to the blade and the blade too close to the fence. So that also played into how much material I needed. So you can see me there ripping down that last bit of the profile. And with that, we pretty much have everything. I think with that, we might have enough to go ahead and build our profile. So I'm gonna see what I've got here. I'm gonna stack these up in the sequential order and then we'll know if, if we have enough. Now, ideally, I would rip everything exactly to the thickness of that blade and then do the offset so I have perfectly good offset. But I'm just eyeballing this. You see when I dial it in, I'm kind of just looking for that thickness right there. So it's about the thickness of the blade, but not quite. So I don't have this dialed into a true science because I'm trying this out for the first time, but I think it's gonna work. Like these pieces are super flexible. I mean, that swoop is about like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna make this work. So let's see if I got the profile. You can see the pieces start getting thinner as we get closer to that cap, as that cap kind of diminishes. Okay, that's a one, two, and then this one was my A. Okay, so I'm gonna go one, a, two, B. So I should, in theory, be able to take this. Don't, don't get out of line. So I've got my second rip stack organized. I've got my first stack organized right here. We'll put these two together and we'll see how close we are. So there's, there's our molding that we can now bend. That is just too freaking cool right there. Look at that. You can see the profile in it. You can see it kind of taper down with that round over and diminish away. I'll have to line these up better when I pin and glue them together, but that is what we're after right there. You can see, I guess it would swoop up this way on our skirt board. So that's it. So I need to make sure this is just as tall as our actual piece right here. So let me see what I've got. I've got an inch and five sixteenths. Now our actual piece is an inch and three sixteenths. So I can lose some of this 
down here at the bottom where there's no profile, where there's really no shape here, it's just straight, I can lose some 16ths right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And that is going to be, let me see, I'll lay this flat so I can look at it. I could probably lose this first one, the second one. We'll see where that puts us. That gets us right at an inch and three sixteenths. So I lost A and one. You can see my labeling there. This is very important to have these labeled because uh, they've already gotten mixed up on me a little bit, but I can easily put them back in order with the labeling. But check that out. There's a laminated piece of that stair cap. That is just too cool right there. So I'm gonna keep these in order and we're gonna go ahead and get our glue and our pin nailer and line up that 45. These already have that outside 45 on all of them. We'll line them up on that pencil line over there and get these installed. So I've got my pieces laid out right here still in that order. We'll take this first one and start flexing it into place. Look at that. That is just too cool. It bends in there so easy. We're way past our straight pencil line right there. So I've got all this to work with. You can see I got some tear out right there from the table saw. So that's why I kind of made these extra long. So I'll find a good point where these are all solid and I'll cut them using that multi-tool. But look at that. That is gonna work out like a charm. Got my 45 degree miter on there. Lines up good with that piece and I think it's time to start installing these. So let's do it. All right, first piece. People ask me why do I glue stuff to painted surfaces? There's really no other reason other than it really helps me sleep better at night. <laughs> So there you have it, there's piece number one. And I just counted these, there's 17 more to go. So we're gonna do the same process 17 more times, lining up our crucial point up here, which is our outside miter, and not really giving too much care to this end down here that's gonna be cut off. But it's gonna be that same repetitive process, just adding glue to each individual um, piece of wood, and then doing the lamination getting it anchored in with pin nails. So we're gonna be here for a while, guys. With that ghost that's upstairs, <laughs> there is something, we're the only ones here. It's a Saturday night. I don't know what's going on. Everybody left. <laughs> There's someone up there, like walking around. Look, listen. There's someone up there. And we can't go up there right now because they just sprayed a bunch of paint all through that area and it's blocked off. There's literally no one here other than us as far as we know.
This is the last piece I'm pinning in right now. And it looks like it's gonna work really good. I'll bring you up close here in a minute and show you how this thing's checking out. But <laughs> that's just so cool. Like, this is one of the coolest things we've ever done. This little cap right here, making this profile bend like this. Ah, oh, the... It died on the last one. <laughs> that always happens, it never fails. You wanna change me out, boss? Yeah, switch battery. So I got my uh, surf prep sander here, which allows you know some cushion there so it can kind of hug around that profile. But these were actually pretty decent as far as lining up. I tried to line them up as flush as I could on the face here, but human error is gonna come into play, so they weren't perfect. But I hit them with this 220 and knocked them down. You can see the dust here. They, they didn't need much, but Man, this thing is just super, super smooth now. This looks like a solid chunk of wood. You can barely see the lamination in this. And especially since this is gonna be paint grade, you'll never know. This is 18 thin little strips of wood making up this cap right here. So I've got that down there. I'm gonna cut that. Uh, later, I'm actually not gonna do that today. I'm gonna come in Monday and do that. But I will finish out this piece up here. And this piece right here, it's pretty crazy. I eyeballed this thing to get that miter. So it needs a little work and I've just got a, a little chisel right here. I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit and then we'll see how our mitered piece fits in its place here. That is freaking awesome looking. I was really like, I kind of knew this would all bend in place because you're ripping these thin strips. It's obvious physics tells you you're gonna be able to, to bend those thin pieces. But the miter was really the scariest part. So as I was installing these little strips, you saw me with this piece, starting with the first one using my my finished piece over here as a guide to kind of line all these up. And doing that actually worked out really well where I barely needed any chisel work. But what I want to do now, since this just looks so good, I want to get a little bit of water and kind of like go over this and just see all those pieces of wood, that lamination come to life. Because as it is right now, it looks like a solid chunk. All right, in my head, this. Sounds really cool, but we'll see. Oh yeah, you can see, you can definitely, that brings them to life a little bit more. Oh yeah, you can see down there where that grain pattern changes a little bit, or not pattern, but grain color changes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. All 18 pieces, wow. All right guys, there you have it, bent lamination. Bending a piece of molding and getting the profile and everything, that was pretty cool. First time ever, like I said, really cool, really interesting. Definitely gonna be keeping this one in mind, putting this in the bag of tricks if I have any other curved work that presents itself because this is one way to handle it. Key takeaways, basically make sure you have more than enough molding because you're gonna be ripping those pieces out and you're gonna to need to replace them as you rip through the table saw. And then also, just glue and pin nails. I mean, those that thing ain't going nowhere. When that glue cures, I mean, that's a solid piece of wood. I would venture to say too, 
that if that thing's set up, I could probably pop it all off as one. So the bottom one is tacked into the skirt and all the other ones are tacked into that bottom one and some of them got into the skirt too. I was using one inch pins, but I think I could pop that whole thing off tomorrow. I'm not going to, but it would be a solid piece. It's like a form when you clamp something up. Pretty cool. I mean, I thought this was interesting. Hopefully you guys did too. Hopefully you learned something from this video. As always, it was a joy to share it with you. But other than that, that's gonna wrap it up for us on this one and we'll catch you guys on the next video.